Glasgow has fallen, if she ever really stood. This merchant city, this empire in new clothes as a flagship font and facial recognitions at the turnstile. Drones with a camera on every corner, Kettling and George Square. Glasgow's citizens stand mute at the food banks, walk home in twos and bolt their doors. Rejoice. There are 800 homes being built on Site Hill, 250 affordable rents in an abattoir, 152 burnt coffins for the homeless. Icarus wandered through the city's womb, the barras. He saw ghosts in the cobbles, artisan graffiti saluting his south face in shadow, graffiti commissioned by the council. He remembered his gran here, Brass slung from bony shoulders, flirting with the butcher for cobalt pork chops. Her hands rose above a haze sea of fag smoke and spiral perms to grab that coveted striped bag. That cotton stall. Every scullery and every scheme had its nets. Icarus met his love here. Kissed her pressed rough against traders' walls, dreamed a dream to make her happy. Bought her a shamrock in St Patrick's Day spied it later floating in the foam of an empty tenant's glass. He pondered, taking a left at St Alphonsus Church, kneeling for salvation or a sign of life. He imagined St Lucy's teenage hands outstretched, her eyes being poked out for being pretty. She pitied him, although he'd always found the green and ivory of the chapel an easeful balm, the priest's pious lull dissipating and dancing amongst the rafters. And the Jew, of that waking city, all damp and shagged out for last night's rain. An early morning delivery van pills a Polish off-licence for the daily grind. A heavy heart sparked the fire in Icarus's belly. He raised his hood, stooped his neck and deliberated, scuffed his trainers with every step. He turned his back on the east end and scuttled purposely across the climb. Everyone's for somewhere, or so the saying goes. Yet Eve cannot remember where she knows she has tide in her bones, a green on her fingers and a dead drawl on her tongue. Glasgow's a city of which school did you go to, she can't remember. What's your second name? She's got none. She's just Eve. Not the type to put your faith in, but striking enough to fuck. Until she fell in love with a wandered man in the fire in his gut. She was never cast out of the garden, 
It's just our garden had changed. It lined the kitchen window, rosemary, curry plant, mint and oregano, merged with the culinary bubble in the stove. Through the leaves, she could just about make out the silhouette on the camera of a lamppost overhead, rotating as people went in, out, in, out, in, to the newsagents next door. She wondered if it knew where her lover had gone. Eve used to be another kind of witch, a barmaid in the best pub in Glasgow, although that title's always debatable. She mixed potions of rum and blackcurrant peppermint for heartburn, pulled laggers as punters poured their woes onto the drip mats. She would split the tips, keep notes as her own. One by one, the patrons dropped off and the pubs then closed. The streets grew barren. Government bailouts were offered, but it was too late for Eve. With no job, she found herself on the other side of the bar, shedding bitterness to strangers. Drinking dens eventually emerged for the rubble. Addiction and loneliness dictates it so, and Eve is always wanting more. At home, she hung over a bubbling cauldron of stock cubes and barley, tied her hair in a bauble, steam creeping up her nose. Delicious. As she moved around the kitchen, tossing dirty knives into dishwater, Tammy Wynette crackled through an old wind-up radio. Stand by your man. Glasgow is a high-speed technocracy stitched with invisible fibres, firing information and misinformation through unspecified sources. Cameras on every corner track individuals through surveillance systems with little legal guidance on ethical application. Facial recognition and online avatars, deregulation and the compilation of identifiers means, for most of the city's citizens, only their thoughts are free. Glasgow's history as a gangland haven, a hotbed of radical thought, a sin city, has been used against her in this battle for data, a conflict in keeping people safe. But the real threat comes not from the communities, not from the workers or close cleaners, the immigrants or drug dealers, not from the thinkers, the day drinkers and the down and out. The danger is an existential threat, that white elephant in the room. Glaswegians are bombarded with more information than any generation before. Constant streams from handheld devices create an illusion of freedom at the fingertips. This is untrue. Sophisticated algorithms drive timelines and search engines while censorship and press emission dictates what we see on TV. We are free to choose what we want to watch and when, with no real consideration given to the limited undercurrents that drive our selection. Such tunnel vision is compacted by the constant rhetoric of war. Just war, holy war, class war, ideological war, 
culture war, civil war, border war, war on cancer, war on drugs, war on gang crime, war on coronavirus, war on benefit fraud. This choice of language is not serendipity, but strategic.